by my watch, uh, we're good to go. Um, and oh, uh, they're still trickling in from the back. Um, so we're good to go. And thank you, everybody, as always, um, for, for jumping on um, and joining us again this week for another uh, Property Thursday. Believe it or not, it was 16 months when we first did our Property Thursday. And uh, that was with API. So it's so a welcome return through to API. And uh, this is coming live from the home of football. Um, so welcome, everybody. Um, every week we do this. We have solicitors, we have mortgage brokers, we have our guests, our panelists that come on to, to share their expertise. And so this week, I'm delighted to say, as I mentioned earlier on, it's API. I love API, a reason I like IPA, API, because they have the freedom and this Ross's role, freedom to go up and down the country and find and scour and look for the best deals for our Holden clients. So that's what uh, Ross and he's just uh, a fountain of knowledge about the property market. I don't think I know any, anybody better. So when, it, when people are looking for a price range or whether it's a location, then API have usually got the solution, which is great. And um, I always say this, but any questions, please put them at the bottom. We don't want to just ramble on um, unnecessarily. So I'm looking now, we've got people in St. Petersburg, somebody from Saudi, London, Georgia. So we've got a nice number of people on. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pass across to Lewis. Lewis, welcome to the show. Thank you, Chris. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening, where we all are. Um, Today, we're going to give you an overview of, uh, firstly, about API, who we are as a company. Um, secondly, why we believe the West Midlands is such a strong investment case. And then I'll hand over to Ross, who will talk you through uh, a number of our key projects across the West Midlands area. Um, so, firstly, API, uh, we were founded in 2013, okay? We act as a global distribution platform and really acting as a conduit for UK property developers to give them exposure to the international market, um, as well as acting as a sourcing partner for um, the likes of Holborn, as Chris mentioned earlier on. Now, we've got six offices globally. Okay, I'm based here in Dubai. We've got offices in Hong Kong, Kuala Lumpur, Nairobi, Cape Town, and the head office where Ross is based in London. Now, in particular, the, the head office is, is probably the most important office that we've got. It's sort of got the key areas and the core areas that we focus on. So Ross has got a, a great team of guys on the ground there that focus on the research and the DD side of things. Like Chris said, we scour the UK looking at investment opportunities and reasons why we should or shouldn't go into certain regions of the UK. Um, we've also got a mortgage team that work hand in hand with Holborn Mortgages to ensure that your clients are going to get the best rates applicable to their individual circumstances. Okay, we've then got a tax team that is more geared towards setting up um, limited companies, which helps reduce further taxes at a later stage. We've then got a resale team. So if your client purchases something from us today and in five, 10, 15 years time, they wanna sell that, then we can assist in doing so um, for no additional cost. And then probably most importantly, being an international investor, you know, a non-UK resident is the lettings and management side of things as well. So we will source you a tenant, we'll manage that tenant for you to ensure that the rent's paid on time. But also from a maintenance perspective, you know, the last thing that, that you and your clients want is a phone call at nine o'clock at night on a Friday or a Saturday, complaining that the boiler's broke and there's a leak. Okay, so our property company, Redstone in the UK, will manage all of that hassle for you on your behalf. Um, now, the, the, the concept that we follow, the concept that API follow when looking at reasons why to invest in areas of the UK really comes down to basic economics. Okay, there's no real magic trick to it. It's, it's purely looking at areas where demand will outstrip supply. Um, and what we predominantly look for is where government fiscal policy applies and how that manifests into the likes of infrastructure, economic and corporate relocation, and higher education and universities. Now, today it's all about the West Midlands, okay, and in particular, Birmingham. Now, Birmingham being the most populated district and the second largest city, okay, in the UK. Um, it's not only a diverse and economically successful hotbed of music, sport and literature, but it's also located right in the middle of the country. Now, the host of the 2022 Commonwealth Games has given us the world Cadbury's Chocolate, Peaky Blinders, and also Ozzy Osbourne, just to name a few. Now, Birmingham has become an investment hotspot, not only for property, 
but also for companies looking to relocate their business. From global businesses to British greats, Birmingham has seen names as big as HSBC and Deutsche Bank move to call this Midlands home, Midlands hub home. Now the initial decision to open in Birmingham is largely down to the live, work and play environment that Birmingham underpins. This focus ensures that employees are able to get the most out of not only their workplace, but also where they live as well. The excellent connections that Birmingham has to London and beyond are a significant factor that appeals to many organisations. Now, when we just delve into the, the actual stats and, and the grit of it on the, on the screen, you know, we can see that Birmingham is the UK's second city. Okay. Now, within that, we've got a 1.2 million population, 10% of which are actually in financial services. Now, financial services are arguably the backbone of the UK economy, seeing the likes of HSBC and Deutsche Bank now called Birmingham their, their headquarters, and also Goldman Sachs, which is soon to follow. We've also got a fairly young population, okay, 40% of the population is under 25. Um, now, what's great about having a, a young population is that that can drive the economic growth, which will outweigh the social costs of an aging population. Um, but probably most importantly, what we see from um, demand and where that can outstrip supply is really is where, really where um, students are based. So we've got three major universities within uh, within the, the West Midlands, um, totaling seventy five thousand students. Okay, now forty one percent of students, once they have graduated, remain within the West Midlands area. Now, if you think of that almost as a compounding effect, when you've got 41% of students remaining in and around the area year on year, these students need somewhere to live or these graduates need somewhere to live. Now, we already know there's a huge undersupply of properties within the area. You can see the stat at the bottom, there's a shortfall of 39,000 properties. Now, these students or graduates can no longer live in student accommodation. They need to go out into the big bad world and fend for themselves that naturally creates a demand which is already outstripping the supply. Now the 20 year uh, big city plan, okay, is um, a 20 year master plan. It's a vision to encourage and support Birmingham's continuing transformation into a world class center. It's set to create 150,000 new jobs, which again, when you think of economics and demand outstripping supply, if you've got people that are needing to be based in and around the area, naturally that will create a demand which is already outstripping the undersupply at the moment. Again, referring back to fiscal policy, okay, and we talk about infrastructure investments and how that benefits the economy. You've got a number of investments that are already underway um, within the West Midlands area, but the one I'm really going to focus on is the Smithfield Master Plan, okay? As one of the largest and most attractive city centre developments in the country, Birmingham Smithfield will be a key part of the evolving growth story. The site has all the ingredients to become a hugely successful and vibrant place. It will be able to capitalise on the rich history of the area, the proximity to the retail offer, the creative court and the knowledge hub and the future city centre terminus for the HS2, which is due later in 2028. I come on to the HS2. It's going to be the first stop on the HS2 rail system is Europe's largest mega project. Okay, it will link London to Birmingham in under uh, in around 49 minutes. But then further afield, northwest, we're looking at uh, Manchester, Sheffield and Leeds with an additional 40 minutes on top. Now, again, when you're located in an area where you can link from Midlands to down south or northwest to down south in around an hour and a half, again, it becomes more attractive um, for people who are previously based in and around London that are looking for a, a lower cost um, lifestyle, a lower price per square foot, but also lower rentals as well. Not only will you be able to commute from Birmingham to London in 40, 49 minutes, it will also have access to 45 million people within an hour round trip. Now here we've got a graph of the house prices from 1995 to 2020, okay? You can see that the price has remained consistent. It's always gone up. And if you look at the trend that's going through the middle, if you look at the likes of the financial crisis when there was a slight dip, even after that, the Birmingham economy recovered fairly sharply. If we... Lewis, I was going to say, looking at that graph, when you think it, yesterday, I think, was the five-year anniversary of Brexit. 
and all the doom and gloom that was, was talked about then with regard to the, the property market and looking at that graph, wow, um, you know, Brexit, COVID, property is watertight, isn't it? I'm mean, going to say that it's watertight. Um, and that's why people like property. So that, that's a great, when you look at what the country's gone through in the last year, in the last five years, um, it's just such a good investment. Sorry to interrupt, um, have your drink and then, uh, sorry, carry on. Not at all. Um, but also, you know, if you, if you look at the, the last two years of the graph, 2019, 2020, when you can actually see the property prices are under the, the common trend, that just proves how much more room for growth there actually is within the West Midlands and the Birmingham area. Now, probably 99% of the, the business we do, the clients we sit with, use a leveraging model. Okay. Now, it's not just because they can't afford to buy the property outright, but purely from a, um, a financial advice perspective, it makes sense to utilize the bank's money. Now, here we've got two examples of if you were to purchase something in cash, own it outright, and if you were to purchase um, using a 30% deposit and leveraging 70% from the bank, okay? So investor A buys a 250,000 pound house or apartment in cash. That grows at 5% per annum for five years, okay? At a compounding rate of 27.63%. That now makes that apartment worth £319,070. Now, if you reassume that the rental income, okay, is a £1,000 a month, over a 12-year period at the same compounding rate, that is a total of £66,308. Now, when you combine the, the, the rental income with the capital appreciation, okay, you've got a profit of £135,378, which compared to your original investment of 250 k is a return of 54% on the capital you've put down. Okay, now 54% over five years, nearly 11% per annum, okay, quite attractive. It's what you'd obtain going into equities or going into stock market. However, you can achieve significantly more by utilizing a lower deposit and leveraging from the bank. Okay, and here's why. So for the same apartment, 250,000 pounds, investor B puts down 30% cash. Okay, so 75,000 pounds, <clears throat> leveraging 70% from the bank, which is equivalent to 175K. Now, again, growing at that same 5% over five years compounded, an increase in the property um, value of 69,070 pounds, that gives you a property price of 319K. Now, let's just assume that your rental income of 1,000 pounds covers all of your fees and your mortgage repayment. Okay, so we're calling that a cash flow neutral. So there's no actually um, actual positive um, monetary amount coming in every month. So let's just assume that as a cash flow neutral, your profit on the property is £69,070. Now, when comparing that to your original investment, and your original investment is only 30% deposit, that's actually then a 92% return on your capital. So as you can see, the reasons why we use leveraging as opposed to cash it's because one, the client has to put down less, but two, the returns on your investment are significantly more. And can I add to that, Lewis, one thing that we feel so strongly about at Holborn, um, when we do the due diligence, obviously we're looking on the mortgageability, we're looking to make sure everything's going to be <clears throat> working properly, but get in early to get your mortgage sorted. We've got a great department at Holborn Mortgages. Get in early as you can, get it dipped, what we call dipped, decision in principle, um, and maybe even talk about remortgages. I can't stress enough to get in there early and, and get your bank account set up um, and get it all ready, rocking and rolling, uh, ready for, for completion. Um, that's the advert, Lewis, and welcome to South Africa. Thank you, Lewis. <laughs> uh, okay. Great job, Lewis, well done, mate. Now I'm gonna hand over to Ross, who, uh, who will talk you through the different projects we've got on offering currently in the Birmingham area. Hello to everyone. Thanks a lot, Lewis. Hello, Chris, again. Thanks for having me back. Well, you paid. I did pay. I did pay. Nice so, guys, we've got... Everything. Thank you. Thank you. So, we've got a really good cross-section today for you for our Birmingham offerings. We've got a really nice, um, diverse portfolio across different areas of Birmingham, including some property that's under construction, some property that's complete, and we've also got some property that's complete and rented, i.e. income generated. So we'll kick things off with Apex Lofts. 
Um, we have discussed this on a, one of our previous webinars with you, so it's quite exciting to actually discuss where we're up to now with the construction, which I'll come on to. Uh, but for those that are new to the project and it's the first time seeing it, uh, this is a project that we're partners with the developer. Uh, it's a project we went into uh, super confident and we still are. And as it's getting further into the construction, um, we're getting happier and happier with where, the, uh, where we're up to with it. So just to give you a quick background, I'm, um, I'm based on the ground in the UK. We're meeting developers constantly. Uh, we're being uh, offered projects. We're running appraisals. We do our due diligence. We run the stress tests. This can be with lenders contractors, their backgrounds, the site exactly where it is in proximity to, as Lewis has very well described, um, our investment hotspots and our USPs for why we would uh, uh, see it as a sound and uh, uh, quality investment for you. Um, and Apex Lofts ticked all the boxes very early on. And as Digbeth continues to transform, um, we're in a very good situation on this property. You can see from the picture there, it's a very unique design. Uh, there are some quite generic designs happening in the region, which I just think you want to attract tenants to come there and stay there long term, which is why we refine the design somewhat. And instead of putting, which in our planning application had to have townhouses within the development, instead of putting them on the ground floor, we decided to put them on the top floor um, and have them as skylofts. So this development has uh, duplex split level skylofts on the roof terrace um, with lovely views into the city. And it also has a roof garden and a gym up on the roof. So with construction coming up for Q2 next year, it's, it's looking very, very good now. If you just roll to the next one, please, Lewis. As Lewis went into with the, um, the master plan itself, you can see where the arrows dropped there, exactly where the project is. Now, we are literally a couple of minutes walk from that massive Smith Mill master, flat, master plan, which is going to have 3,000 uh, employees literally based up the road. And you can see due north of where the project is located. Again, it's walking distance to the Curzon Street HS2 station, which is where the HS2 will come up from London, Euston and settle in Curzon Street in the city centre. So it's a really strategic location. Obviously, all of the city, set city centre USPs are there, but the main uh, talking points of why we think this is going to really grow in value um, is the Smithfield Master Plan uh, direct database of uh, tenants on good money living around the corner from the property. They've got options to rent, they've got options to buy, uh, and looking at a project that really stands out as unique with some great selling points. And I think, as you'll see on the next slide when we get there, it's the unit sizes as well, which is important. We want tenants to uh, move into properties and stay there long-term. So with the apartment sizes we've got, the tenants will are more likely to stay there long-term. You can see with some of these, if you look at some of the one bedrooms there, a very average price uh, size for a one bedroom is around the four, 450 square foot marker. Um, people outgrow them quite quickly uh, and look for larger properties where they can get a bit of freedom of space. Uh, with what's gone on in the pandemic, a lot of people are looking for additional space. They want to work from home. And when you can see the sizes there on one bedrooms at 550 square foot plus, they're huge one beds, really nice one beds. And we think on completion, when tenants are coming in to view these ones, uh, the one and two bedrooms over other projects in the area, they will pick this in a heartbeat and stay long term. Um, if you can just go, Lewis, onto the construction, I think the last time we spoke to you uh, regarding Apex loss, uh, it was just to show you that the, uh, the steel frame had been delivered and it was starting to come out of the ground. Um, we're happy to say the, uh, the, the, the steel frames are actually up to full height now. Um, and they, we're already up to the eighth floor on the steel frames. Lewis, if you just get the uh, construction uh, image up. So I must say, Ross, they are, they are nice big one beds, aren't they? Um, you know, and the two beds, Chris, to... if you look at the sizes of the two beds, 750, 812, 900 yeah. on, the big, on the big two beds on the, on the top floor. They're yeah. massive units. And, and it, it, it just, in any country of the world, if you're looking at an apartment and you're looking to rent there long term, tenants don't want to move every 12 months. You know, it's a lot of aggravation. It's a cost to move. You want to move somewhere and stay there. Um, ideally until you've saved cash to buy a property yourself. But I think I do believe rather than tenants coming in for 12 months and moving out, leaving you with void periods, um, I think you're going to get three to five year tenants easy on this project. Yeah, um, that's really that's really good news from a, from a, a looking at long term. Um, and also, I guess you're looking at the, the executives that are going to be working from the head office on HS2 
and executives that are, you know, just a walk away. And they all like to live together because they can chat about the train. Um, so, yeah, I think we've still got that slide on, Lewis, on ours. We've yeah, still got the figures. For some reason, it's skipping the construction slide. It's not technical issues. It's not sticking on the slide. It's just jumping straight to the next project. Oh, that's okay. Well, look, we've, we've got the construction um, update going out next week. We do a quarterly construction update on all of our projects. Apex Loft, of course, is featured. So that will be going out to everyone next week. But, of course, the updated um, um, project pictures will send out to all of the uh, Holborn groups now so they can be sending them on to all of their uh, clients and, and consultants and previous people that have purchased within the development as well. So we'll get those out today. Uh, but rest assured, it's fully on site. Ten M are a great developer. We worked closely with them on their previous project, which was completed um, on time, and it's been rented out at a great level as well, which was the Iron Works, which is very close to Digbeth, um, uh, very close to Apex Lofts. It's actually only around the corner by uh, by two streets. So we've got a great relationship with them, and we're really happy to see two cranes, lots of high vis workers on site, and the frame has flown up to full height now. So what's the next one up, Lewis? Broad Oaks is a project we've just brought to market in Solihull. So Solihull is Birmingham's most affluent suburb. It's a beautiful suburb, lovely high streets, lots of green open space, uh, very close to the station, and you're only 10 or 15 minutes away from the city centre, and it is classed as Birmingham's number one suburb. So we're really happy to have this project. Again, from the due diligence side uh, and from the uh, quality of product side, this is our third development with this developer. Um, the previous developments, one in Ashford, and of course you'll be familiar with the silk works in Coventry, um, completed. Um, tenants are going to be starting to move into this, uh, into silk works very soon. Broad Oaks, these units are complete, so it's a completed development. And um, we've got a mix of ready uh, and rented, and also ready and vacant apartments, which we'll come to. So the, the development, as I said, it's completed. All of the apartments come with a parking space. It's very close to the station and it's just a very nice looking project. Unit sizes in this are great for, uh, great for yield. Uh, Lewis, if you just run through to the next one, you can see there on the map. So we've got a really strategic location. As much as it's a nice green suburb, you are strategically located for some great USPs. You're close to the airport, you're close to the international station, which is also going to be close to the HS2 interchange station which is different to the Curzon Street uh, HS2 station we discussed previously in the city centre. When the HS2 departs from Euston, it will reach the interchange station uh, by Birmingham Airport before it forks and goes into Curzon Street and, and stays there. So the distance between Euston and the interchange by the airport is only 38 minutes. So connectivity is fantastic on this one, but you're not close enough to the airport and to the um, the HS2 and the NEC that it's going to be on that price bracket. Solihull really holds itself as a um, as an investment hotspot. Tenants move there and stay there and prices do really well there. Um, and we're just happy with how we've got the pricing on Broad Oaks. We've got the one bedroom starting from around 190, including parking. Um, so if you just go to the next one, Lewis. And what I like about this, Ross, because a lot of people ask it, they want growth and they also want yield. Um, and it's not easy to get both in one space. And what I like about this with that rent assurance you mentioned um, and, the, and its popularity and where it's gonna go up in value, you may be, may be ticking both boxes. Would, would that be too much to ask? I, I, think that, I think it's just choice, right? I mean, everyone wants choice. With a, with a development like this, we've got studios, they're good sized studios and they are all rented. Now these are generating a very high rent that we're able to offer a 7% net rental assurance for the first 12 months. This may continue further on, which it's highly likely it will. The developer did a very um, a very good deal with a global car manufacturer, um, Toyota, and they've rented the, um, the units from him for all of their staff. Now it's almost run like a hotel, it's managed very well. The furniture is included within the prices of these and they have been furnished, I would basically say like a very high end hotel room, even down to knives, forks, spoons, everything is there. And these also include parking spaces as well. So the top units, the top uh, prices there you can see are all the rental assurance studios. All come with furniture and all come with parking spaces. The list below this are ready units which are ready to purchase now. They're vacant. 
Um, and again, it's, it's a great spot. I think the rental demand there is going to be very straightforward. Our own property management division is handling this. So again, we can get tenants straight through the door for you. But look at the pricing. Look at the pricing, Chris. So you've got one bedrooms starting from the 194. 190 uh, is for a studio, 180 for the smaller studio. But 194, 950 for a one bedroom in Solihull, including a parking space. I believe these are actually undervalued for where they are. Uh, the unit sizes are great. Development's very attractive. And you've got to look from as much as we're running all of the due diligence, we do everything our side. This is a zero risk investment because you'll go straight to mortgage. There's no interim period where you'll exchange contracts um, and then wait for something to be delivered. This one, you can go straight to mortgage and collect your keys once you've done a simultaneous exchange completion. Um, and again, we're ready to take the management away from any of the clients and look after all of that from the UK. Sounds um, absolutely perfect. And, you know, it's great that you brought this to us uh, because there's such an appetite for completed stuff at the moment, much more than we, we've had before, probably because of what's going on. Um, and on this particular one, uh, working from home, do they have areas where people can, uh, you know, work away from their bedroom, if you like, communal areas? Yeah, there's a, there's a, and there's a lot of outside space as well. It's, it's a really nice, uh, it's not condensed all in on top of each other and high rise. It's a nice low rise building. There's loads of outside space. Um, within the development, you've got a nice lobby area. When you go through that nice rounded entrance, you can see there, it's, it's just a great project. We've got video walkthroughs of all of the units that we've got currently on screen, which we're happy to share. And this is a really nice option, especially for our overseas um, investors and overseas uh, clients to be uh, able to walk the floors as such and see every angle of the property. So we'll get all of those again after this over to all the guys so they can start actually visualizing how the apartments flow and what units will look in which direction. That's great, Ross. That's great. Next one, Lewis. So the Axiom. Chris, you know about this one and a lot of the team on the call know about this uh, project. We've been selling this one since it was way off plan. Um, we're happy that the project is completed. Uh, we're also busy down there most days with handovers, move-ins and, um, and of course, uh, tenant uh, lettings and management. So it's been a great project for us. Uh, we had two projects from the same developer, um, not too far from each other. The other one was Arden Gate. Uh, very large projects, um, completed, very high quality. Uh, the Axiom is very close to the Curzon Street HS2 and the large Radisson SAS, the big blue glass tower of Birmingham. So really close to New Streets, centrally city centre located. And we've still got some really, really attractive units left in this development. So again, clients looking for city centre that want it completed stock, i.e. again, straight to mortgage. Um, and then we can do the process through the conveyances and the solicitors, and then they will exchange and complete simultaneously. Oh, this is a great shot on screen. So you can see exactly all of the familiar landmarks of the city centre. Uh, you've got the Rotunda, you've got Grand Central, uh, the mailbox, and then you can see there exactly where the, both of the developers' projects are, Arden Gate and the Axiom. So just off shot to the right-hand side is where the Curzon Street HS2 uh, site is going to be constructed and built. And as Lewis rightly said there, uh, we're hoping that the first trains will be arriving in there in 2028. And until that time, if you look at the price per square foot and you're looking at prices in the area, Thank you. I think that we can see a solid increase upwards. If you, if you imagine being in a city centre that has that connectivity to London and the rest of the country, and you're looking at buying prices for two bedrooms of that size for 300,000, I think anybody that knows the, the markets in the southeast, where I'm unfortunately based, if you're looking to buy a property, um, a very entry level price into a, um, even a zone six area in London, zone six is very far out of the city centre, is around four to 500,000. So to be in a city centre, true city centre, with all of these USPs for 300,000, again, you can see where the growth is going to come. And I, I think for all those people in, in other parts of the Holborn world um, who have not been to the UK, Birmingham is dead centre. Uh, you, you know, it's bullseye, isn't it? You can get anywhere yep. from there. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a great location. Um, and, and also, and I say this oftentimes, um, so much gentrification and, and improvements being made there. And almost people that are buying there are buying on somebody else's investment. The government and the local council are spending millions, millions. It's billions. It's the, billions are being spent. Millions. And you can, you can see it. I mean, I'm in, I'm in Birmingham a lot when we're meeting developers. There's 
cranes are swing, swinging around permanently. They're, they're, they're closing off roads to open another road to keep this moving and going and going. But every time you visit there week on week, there's more improvement. You know, the skyline's growing. And the city centre, as Lewis explained on the, uh, the 20-year master plan, the city centre is swelling outwards. So areas like Digbeth, we discussed previously where Apex Lofts is, in years to come, will be city centre. And I think Digbeth, if I remember uh, correctly from previous webinar, is voted the nicest town in England. I call it the Shoreditch of uh, the Shoreditch of Birmingham. It's it's, it's great. It's, it's industrial. There's lots of red brick Victorian buildings there, um, but you can see week on week, month on month, the improvements that are coming there. There's not lots of buildings that are just dormant and uh, old industrial factories with smashed windows. They're going for it. They're spending the money, and you can see it. Yeah. Amazing. And, and your, your investment is on the on the coattails of what they're spending. So, yeah, it's a, it's a great story, Birmingham. Thank you, it's Ross. The friendliest neighbourhood in the UK in 2020. The friendliest neighbourhood. There you go. Friendiest. Oh, friendiest. 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 Where are you from, Lewis? Are you from that part? I'm not, no. <laughs> oh, I thought you were. Sorry, Ross. Um, what else is next? So this one is a surprise for you all. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> so this this is a this is a new launch that we're going to be working on um, over the next week, aiming for next week. So we've done really well as a as a business, and uh, we've we've seen a lots of developers doing really well in an area just outside the city centre, towards the airport and the HS2 uh, master plan and Arden Cross, called Yardley. Now there's two locations: you have Yardley and you have Sheldon. They're basically next to each other. Now, this will be our fourth project in the location. Um, I believe you guys have done some very good sales before in the Interchange, a project that we sold in 2018. And then more recently, a project we launched in 2020 called Sheldon Court. Now, tenant demand there is huge. It's always surprised us that the, the actual rents that we're getting on completion are higher than our estimates. Um, it's obviously cheaper than city centre in both price and rent. Um, but you have so much going on there in the way of infrastructure large automotive companies you've got the airport you've got the international rail station and then of course you've got the hs2 uh, interchange station there's a huge work uh, worker population in these two uh, almost uh, they're satellite uh, uh, towns just outside the city center but they operate on their own uh, there's a huge business park in uh, in the location 15 minutes from uh, from this project swan courtyard that houses samsung uh, Rolls-Royce have offices there. Uh, there's 78 companies based within this uh, Birmingham business park, and it's on the doorstep. You can see from the map there where it's located. It's, it's on the A45, which is the Coventry Road, and it's the main arterial road out of the city centre from Digbeth side, out towards Birmingham Airport and the International Rail Station. And of course, along that road, you have the, uh, um, you've got the airport, the HS2 is coming up, and then more importantly, you've got the Bear Grylls Adventure Centre. So it's all there. But it's a great location, Chris, and you can see from the look of the building, um, it's a nice, attractive looking residential building. It doesn't look like a, an office block conversion. It's an attractive building. It's gated. Uh, there's 89 apartments. All of the apartments have a parking space. All of the parking spaces are within the gated uh, parking entrance. And I think more importantly, it's the price point we've managed to get on this project. So any of the, um, any of the consultants or the managers on that were selling Sheldon Court, uh, it's priced just underneath the Sheldon Court money. Uh, the completion date is going to be early next year. Uh, and if you look at the price per square foot here and the unit sizes against the sales prices, you can see the value. Now, an important point on the sales prices is they all include parking. OK, they all include parking spaces. Parking comes at a premium in Birmingham. And I know a lot of developers are charging lots of money for it. We've managed to incorporate all of the pricing that you can see on screen to have the parking spaces within that. And it's a parking space you own. It's not something that you have, uh, you just park up and rock up and park anywhere. For example, the person on ground floor, unit two, the first unit there, they will own parking space unit two. It's within your lease. So once you purchase that, it's in within the property or the asset that you own. So the Swan Courtyard is a low rise building. It's ground plus two floors. Now, if we're looking at mortgageability, which is a big, a big thing on everyone's minds for uh, in the modern market where the banks and lenders heads are at. We've got a ground rent term of 0.1%. 
which is where the lenders wish to see that. Just for those that aren't aware of what that means, if a property price is £150,000, the ground rent per annum will be £150. The lease term is 250 years. There's no commercial in the development and it's accessed from a residential private road or a residential quiet road called Charles Edward Road and through the gate's entrance. So it's a, a, a again, it's gated, it's secure. You enter the gate with a FOB, residence FOB. And the beauty of this project, and I think one of the main selling points, Lewis, if you just go back to the images, is the, uh, the courtyard and just how it's been laid out. You've got a really, really attractive central courtyard for the project, which is uh, lovely uh, block paved, uh, lots of landscaping, lots of mature trees that the developer decided not to remove. Um, and it's also got a big fountain in the middle of the, uh, the project as well. So if you imagine from an aerial view, it's essentially a square that goes around the courtyard and all the residents have access to the central courtyard, which has got lots of seating, table areas, meeting areas. Um, and it's just a nice community feel. Uh, very rare um, to have a, a, a courtyard of this size within a development. Some other developers might have wanted to try and get some additional planning and build something higher and bigger there, but they've kept it nice and open. Uh, and the ground floor units actually have access straight out onto the courtyard. So there's some really, really lovely aspects to choose from there. Uh, and this is something that we'd be looking to launch as early as next week. And uh, a really nice big thumbs up from Darren, who's our resident mortgage guy, who's not here this week. Um, with that, what you were saying about the ground rent, uh, thumbs up for that because he is the mortgage expert and he knows what these banks and lenders are looking for. So that's really, really great news. Well, it's, it, again, it's, it's, it's something that, that, that Michael, uh, that our, our group chairman and I look very seriously at, at is that we need the clients to be able to purchase a property, get the mortgage and then rent the property out for the amount that's been generated from the beginning on our appraisals. So that, that, is, that is what we're seeing is end to end. We don't want to just get things sold. We need to see things through to the end. And as I always say on these uh, webinars, a buy to let investment is only successful once it's been let. So yes. we want to see these through end to end. Mortgageability wise on this is absolutely ticking the boxes. The price point, we know exactly what has been sold in the area. We know what we've just sold Sheldon Court for, which was just a couple of minutes down the road on the left hand side. And we know what the tenants are now paying on, on Sheldon Court. So this price structure should be quite exciting to anyone listening on the call. Um, plenty of room to grow. If you're looking at the city swell of pricing that's coming out of the city towards this uh, investment hotspot um, of Sheldon, you can see where the prices are easily going to be able to climb and be dragged up higher to meet those somewhere in the middle. Um, but a lot of the price per square foot you can see on the screen, early threes. Uh, which is great to see. Some of the higher price per square foot are obviously attached to the smaller apartments, but there's a great cross-section we've got there. And again, for your mortgage guy, which will be music to his ears, is how we've, how we've structured the amount of units that we're going to be looking to sell. Units, I'm talking about apartments, of course, but how we'd be looking to sell these to the buy-to-let um, investor. So we've kept back 35%, which are going to be sold via the help to buy and first-time buyer schemes within the UK. So these will be to the local market, which does help create a nice community environment. And we'll be selling the remainder as buy to let. So even that ratio we've married up to meet the mortgage criteria. Just um, hits the sweet spot as far as pricing is exactly. concerned. Um, from, from my point of view, when you look at a pricing structure like that, and let's just say we talked about 65%. I know you can get 70, but I always say 65 because that's how conservative I am. Um, you know, that, that's a really nice area. You're talking about people that have got £70,000, really. Um, and I always like to you know, think about stamp duty and all the other fees that go with it. Um, great. And it's a, it's a lovely looking project as well. It's got a villagey look about it. Yeah, it's, it's attractive. We were there only uh, two, three weeks ago. Um, the new acoustic glass windows are all going in. The developer's doing a really good job. Uh, again, this is a this is the beauty of where we are currently with the business and how long we've been running with these developers. It's our third project with the same developer now. So we have a good relationship. We know the quality they're going to deliver. Um, it just creates a much nicer element to get the deals through. And if there is any speed bumps further down the line, we've got the relationship there that we can get things uh, in place for the investors. But this is on track for a January completion. 
Wow, so you're talking ten, well, nine months really. So get your Correct, mortgages yeah. in place straight away. Get your bank accounts. Oh, open maybe, maybe an, get... yeah. Towards towards the uh, towards uh, the beginning of Q4, I'd say it'd be time to get the, uh, the the ball rolling with the mortgages. But for sure, it's, yeah. But, it's but a what price I point. what we like to do now here, and we're quite serious about it, is get get it dipped, um, get a decision in principle, get in early, um, take away that stress of those last three months. Um, I'm sure you agree, Ross. It's just you can't start early enough. Okay, you may have to have it um, when it just becomes completion. They have to go through and make sure you're still working for Emirates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's a great idea to get dipped. And I know Darren's on the call; <laughs> he's watching, and he'll be nodding his his head safely. Yeah, I've just but seen no, some I think that's up. great. And we we say also, by the way, you know, getting mortgages under a hundred thousand is nigh on difficult. Depends on people's circumstances. So, you know, we're, we're very sensitive about what, what we, we put in front of our clients. And you mentioned it earlier there. We, we have a very, very good, and you have a very, very good cash flow, which puts into place the purchase price, the amount of the mortgage, capital and interest, interest only, what the lawyers are going to cost, what the stamp duty is going to be. Um, and well, in addition to that, there's also said, five yeah. and 10 year growth, um, yeah. growth calculators based on um, accurate information from the, from the area. To give the clients a full a full picture of a long term investment, but I think again yeah. the price points on screen it, it's it's enabling uh, people's potentially first foray into um, into buy to let investment. It's it's a nice entry level price, but the area has been bolstered by four previous projects that we've been able to sell successfully. With it is it is standing on its own two feet is a great investment hotspot. Well, you certainly surprised us with that one, Ross. Well done. I'm sure Mike's behind that. So thank you for that. <laughs> Uh, Swan Courtyard, um, but it's a great price and, it, and it's a, a great looking building. So uh, have you got any other surprises for us? No, I'm going to keep my blazer on this week. <laughs> so thank you. Um, you've actually answered the questions that people put out as you've gone along, um, which is great. Um, and Darren's been uh, prompting me at the bottom with mortgage. So if there's anything you need, go back, speak to your wealth manager, speak to us, speak to me. Um, and this and other recordings of previous webinars are all on our website, Oldman Assets Property, so you can go back and look at this one um, as well as others. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, South Africa, for jumping on, Saudi Arabia, everywhere else around the world. Um, property is the way to go. Not even COVID, not even Brexit can stop people's appetite for buying property. So I'm going to thank you all once again. Lewis, great first time on the show. See you back soon. Thanks, Ross. Chris. Always welcome. Always easy to listen to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Thank guys. It's been a pleasure.